So we're now in our next video in number theory. And in this video, we're going to continue with our course or our chapter in the theory of congruences. We're now here in the topic of linear congruence. Now, this is a convenient place in our development of number theory at which to investigate the theory of linear congruences. Now, notice an equation of the form ax is congruent to b mod n is called a linear congruence or it's called the linear congruence, okay? And by a solution of such equation, we mean that an integer x sub 0, x sub 0 here, for which a times x sub 0 is equivalent, or rather is congruent to b mod n. So by definition, a x sub 0, or a times x sub 0, is, co is congruent to b mod n, if and only if, n, the modulo, is divisible or n divides or n is a factor of a x sub 0 minus p. Or um, if and only if um, what amounts to be the same thing, a x sub 0 minus b is equal to n y sub 0 okay, for some y sub 0 in the integers. Okay, so this is by another theorem. Thus, by the problem of finding all the integers, okay, thus, by the problem of finding all the integers that will satisfy the linear congruence, ax is congruent to b mod n, is identical with that obtaining all solutions of the linear Diophantine equation, ax minus ny equals b. Okay, so we go back to our concept of LDEs, or linear Diophantine equation, because it's equivalent to finding this. Um, this allows us to bring the results of module 2 into play, or the linear Diophantine equations, to be exact, into play. Now notice that it is convenient to treat two solutions of ax is congruent to b mod n. Again, it is convenient to treat two solutions of ax congruent to b mod n that are congruent modulo n as being equal, even though they are not equal in the usual sense of our equality. Okay, for instance, notice x equals 3 and x equals minus 9. Both satisfy the congruence of 3x is congruent to 9 mod 12. So if we try to, to substitute it there. So if we're going to do that, so if we're going to do that, we have 3 is, con is equal, x is equal to 3, so this becomes 3 is, co is congruent to 9, or rather 3 times 3, 9, is congruent to 9 mod 12, which is true. And also negative 9 times 3 is going to give us negative 27 is congruent to 9 mod 12. So because 3 and negative 9 mod 12, they are not counted as different solutions. Okay, again, they are not counted as different solutions. In short, um, when we refer to the number of solutions of the linear congruence ax is congruent to b mod n, we mean, okay, we mean the number of incongruent integers that satisfies this congruence. Okay, we mean the number of incongruent integers satisfying this congruence. Okay, now with this, in, with this remarks in mind, uh, the principal result is then easy to state, which is in the form of a theorem, and we will call this then theorem 3.6. Okay, our theorem 3.6. Now, what does theorem 3.6 say? Okay, it, it states that the linear congruence, the linear congruence ax is, is congruent to b mod n has a solution, okay, has a solution if and only if d divides b, or d is a factor of b, where d is equal to the greatest common divisor of a and n. Now, if d divides b, then it has d mutually incongruent solutions modulo n. Okay, so that's our theorem 3.6. Um, we will be um, proving that in the next video. Um, just so you know, this is just the introduction of our linear congruences. So thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, see ya.